far so good. So let's just have a look now at the proper signal here. So let's do this. Let's um, load the long ECG dot DAT. So let's load it. Then let's extract it. Ah, before I do this, let's have a look in the matrix what we got here. So the ECG is in the is in the second column here. The first one is just the timestamps here. So we see it's a um, the timestamps are in milliseconds, so we have 200 hertz sampling rate. So that's the ECG. So we extract this by getting the second column out of it. So like like that. And so now if I do a plot of Y, then we should then we should get a ECG. Let's just pull this here on the screen and zoom in. So we see that we're getting an ECG, and we see also that there's quite a lot of um, 50 hertz interference here. Just quite a nice periodic signal, which is the 50 hertz interference here. Okay, so we should see this 50 hertz interference then in the in the Fourier transform. So if we do YF, so we do a Fourier transform, discrete Fourier transform of this signal. And so if I do now, if I now do a plot of the absolute value of this, then we should see the spectrum. So the spectrum now you can is now displayed here. So these are the Fourier indices here. So remember, so this is n, and so this means we have got n samples here. So there are quite a lot of samples, roughly. 30, 33,000 samples here. And these two peaks here, they are hopefully our 50 hertz. Yeah, so these are, this is the 50 hertz peak, and this is the mirror of the 50 hertz peak. Then here at the very beginning, what we see is a thin blue line here. This is our DC coefficient here at the very beginning. So now the problem is obviously the axis is not is not the way we wanted to have it. What we what we want to have is a is a is a proper axis, which is displaying as hertz down here and not the index number. So we need to replace this axis here by a frequency axis, and that's that's pretty easy because we know that in the middle here this is two hundred this is one hundred hertz in the middle we've got one hundred hertz, and so and therefore we just need to have a linear mapping which is covering that and um, so let's just just do that and there's a quite a nice command for this purpose called lin space so if i type this in here there's a built-in function called lin space and it just generates us a vector from the starting value to the end value and with n elements here so in this case, what we would like to have is we would like to have a frequency vector of um, lin space from 0 to 100 hertz. That's our highest frequency. And, and then we take the, the length of our, of our frequency here, divide this by 2, because we only need half of this, not the mirror. And, and we subtract 1 for it because this is going only to, to n minus 1. And um, so let's generate this. So now let's, let's just, of, the, of our actual frequency components here, let's just only take also just the half of it here, so that we don't, don't, use, the, don't use the mirror here. And so Let's do the do the again the same in Unix. We can just copy and pasting this here and generating. We would like to just see the amplitude and not the complex values. And now we see we see the spectrum quite nicely here. It might be useful to zoom in a bit more so that we that we see a bit more here of the actual signal. 
So the ECG is here. This is, these are the ECG components, and this is our 50 hertz noise here. So let's use our axis command. So from 0 to 100, 200 hertz, and from 0 to 1e6. And so now we see quite nicely here. This this is the ECG, and um, we see a quite also also quite prominent this 50 hertz peak here. So now we have solved or sorted out the axis here, and we have a proper spectrum plot of the ECG.